right, moving on to Paranormal Activity 5. The Marked Ones. We're dropping the number now. It's not even called 5. Studios do this all the time. For some reason, when a franchise hits a certain number, it's usually 4, but this time 5. That's odd. They always drop that number. They're like, nobody's going to go see the movie because they haven't seen the first 4. So let's just drop it and then be like 5. But on this one... I can see why they dropped the number because this one's like the cousin sequel of the first four because it's not very, it's, it's connected, but it's not so connected that you got like the same characters throughout or it's like in the same neighborhood or anything like that. This one goes further away and we got this, this Latino family and there's a whole new story. It goes in way different places. It adds to the lore. You got time travel, portals, whatnot. It's very different, so I can see maybe why they decided to drop that five and just say marked ones. Because this is a different story. This isn't about Katie or Christy anymore or Hunter. This is a whole new set of characters in their story. So maybe that's why they dropped the five. This is the first one that didn't come out one year later. It was going to come out in 2013 like it was supposed to in October. But because of the higher budget and the longer shooting schedule, it got held back some. Maybe they took too long, so they pushed it to January. So now it's a, a January horror movie, and those are notorious for being terrible, but this one's not. I actually enjoy this one. I would put this, like, not above three. I still think three is the best, but I would put it maybe above two, in between one and two, somewhere in there, because I like that this one does different stuff. And yeah, this one is directed by Christopher Landon. He wrote, and he wrote this one too. He wrote part two, three, and four, and now they gave him the director's chair. And yeah, let's talk about this movie in this week's Horror Franchise Wednesday. Paranormal Activity Marked Ones. Starting with the little things that I like. I like that we're finally just in an apartment or somewhere different. It's a weird thing to like, but after mansion, 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 just all these mansions, I'm glad we're changing things up even more in this one. Not only is the story different, not only do we get a whole new set of characters, and we add more to the lore, and these characters are very interesting, I like their chemistry together, Jesse and Hector, but we also got an apartment, a rinky-dink apartment in the ghetto. No longer are we in some freaking giant mansion where everything's just clean and white and awesome and I'm just sitting there jealous the whole fucking movie. Finally, I can watch this movie and be like, hey, at least I don't live there. Now I feel better. So I like that. <laughs> For my own selfish reasons, I like that we're in an apartment now that makes my place look much more awesome and huge. So yeah, whatever. Hector and Jesse, I like them. They're nowhere... They're nowhere near better than Big Ben. Big Ben is still my favorite character in the franchise. This is the first paranormal activity with nudity. Yeah. But unfortunately, that comes with a negative. A giant fat woman is butt-ass naked. You see her ass in every single wrinkle within. Oh! And then the guy says, oh my god, my boner's been killed. Like, that killed my boner. I agree with him on that statement. The chick that's naked, though, the skinny one, and the tits too perfect, they have to be fake. Is she fake? It was so blurry, I couldn't even tell. I was just like, okay, I like the tits, you know. But is she even real? She looked like a mannequin. She looked like a mannequin with big, huge, fake tits. I could not tell. And she was so still, she might as well have been a mannequin. She was not moving a muscle. So this is a legit question. Was that a real woman or was that a mannequin? Because I literally, as big as my TV is, I still couldn't tell. I'm like, I was very, I'm on the fence. Was that a real person? Let me know. Because I seriously could not tell. And yeah, I like that we add to the story. We got time travel. I love what happens in the third act. I won't go into it right now because I'm not spoiling the movie yet. Even though I should. It's old. I always save things for the spoiler discussion. But where this movie goes in that third act and the little homages and little winks that we get to like parts one, two, and three, like character-wise or like newspaper clippings, I love all that stuff. I just love that this is still connected, even though it's loosely, kind of loosely connected to the first four, it still like pays tribute to those and says, hey, this is in the same universe. So we're not just flat out ignoring that shit. So I like that there's still 
continuity because I'm a continuity person and I like each movie to flow into each other and there to be one story that just keeps going. So yeah, it's not like they're like severing ties with the other movies like, oh, fuck off. No, they're still connected and I love that. And what else? A GoPro, I love that they changed the whole stationary camera and corners. Like, let's go from this corner to this corner and this corner. Let's watch these people sleep for 12 hours. I'm glad we're not doing that shit no more. I'm glad that they decided to make it more modern with the GoPro camera that became very popular. And it's a GoPro camera, basically the entire movie. So the camera's always moving. If you're motion, if you get motion sickness, this isn't your film. But I don't have that problem, so I was able to enjoy it. So yeah, no more security cam, GoPro. I love that. As for any like negatives, this is just me nitpicking it, but why are they filming over half of this shit? Why is Hector even filming anything? Like I get the graduation party, I get the party afterwards. I get when they un when they discover this kid Jesse is like got the powers from the ghost that's like around him or in him whatever. I understand like all that stuff, but when your friend's getting his ass kicked, why are you still filming? There's a couple of moments where I'm like, dude, just put the fucking camera down and help your friend out. It was so annoying. So yeah, just why are they filming over half the crap that they're filming? And it almost gets them their ass kicked at one point when he accidentally like starts filming gangsters across the street and they're like, what are you doing? Give me that camera. And I was like, exactly. See, you shouldn't be filming everything, Hector. You're an idiot. I like that Hector's wearing a shirt that says, I just look illegal. <laughs> the story at this point is just getting convoluted. Like, they add to the, the lore and what's going on and why to the point where you're like, okay, well, what about this? It's what? Huh? So now I'm just kind of lost. I don't even care anymore. I'm just like, just give me some scary stuff. Do something interesting. I don't care about the story no more. The whole witch thing is just getting boring by now. They continue with it. We still see more witches. They continue that symbol, the triangle, the circle. Even the poster has the guy with like the triangle and the circle. But now they're like adding lore about being 18 and people being marked from birth. And this person knew this person from part whatever. Like it's just getting kind of convoluted at this point. And it makes me ask more questions. I'm getting more questions than answers at this point. And there's not really a whole lot of creepiness. Like there's a few moments, but for the most part, the first half is like lighthearted. And then finally, like the second half, when things aren't that fun for the guy like when he's at first it's all fun like this paranormal entity they're like having fun with it they're like playing Simon Says and whatnot but the second half there's only like a couple eerie moments within the film there's not a whole lot like jumping out at you even though I'm not a big fan of jump scares but there's like nothing jumping out at you at all there's like a couple small moments here and there but that's it so yeah there's not a whole lot of scare factor in here <gasps> Oscar! <laughs> Now, the hottest chick in this movie is Marisol. Marisol, whatever her name is. It's a, a Latino name, I'm guessing, right? Marisol, M-A-R-I-S-O-L. She's like the sister or friend of Hector and Jesse, and she's beautiful. There's a few beautiful ladies in here, but I, she's more my type. Final thoughts. This one's okay. It adds a couple of new things. It's not the same crap, like rinse and repeat, like part four. It doesn't, it actually adds some stuff to the story. There's... A couple of creepy moments here and there. There's good, fun characters in Hector and Jesse that you can latch yourself onto, and they're enjoyable. The acting's good. There's no one that's horrible. And I like the new setting. I like the new story that they're going for. And I like the little tributes that they're paying to the first four, and like the little tapes that you find, the newspaper clippings, all that stuff. I love it. It still has continuity with the first three or four films. So when it comes to Paranormal Activity 5, the marked ones, if you like the other ones, I can't see why you wouldn't like this one. So definitely check it out at Redbox. I will say so far that this franchise is pretty good. Like the quality, there's not like a shit film in here that was just like awful or painfully boring. Like just like, ugh, can this movie end now? They're all average. There's not a horrible movie yet. But we haven't talked about part six yet. That one has four writers. Four different people in the writing room. That is, ugh, that's a red flag. All right, so, spoiler discussion. Now I can talk about my favorite scene. My favorite scene is when he goes through that portal at the end and he goes back in time and he ends up in Katie's place. 
and we see why Katie's down there screaming. Mika comes down there, and we and he we, we remember when he's like, "What the fuck? We thought it was because of Katie. No, it's because of Hector." And he tackles Hector. He tackles Hector to the ground. Katie stabs her boyfriend, and Hector gets killed by Jesse. But yeah, I just love that. That was a cool ending. It wasn't so abrupt, or just not interesting or cool at all like part four part four has a very weak ending just very quick not uh entertaining in the slightest so yeah i think part four is definitely the weakest in the franchise so far now this is going to take a while <laughs> this is the most spoiler shit i've written for the whole franchise so we start in oxnard is that what I wrote? oxnard california 2012 and we have this latino family and they're one of them's graduating from college or high school, I guess, and he's drinking alcohol. You have to be 21. And the family knows he's drinking alcohol, and they're supporting that. That's not right, man. They're breaking the law. You got to be 21, bitch. And then I just love that they're doing jackass stunts. I thought that was funny. They get in, like, a laundry basket, and they're going down the stairs in the laundry basket. It just reminded me of jackass. I thought that was pretty funny. The chemistry with the, this kid and his grandma is pretty funny. Like, they're just very, like best pals he's getting his grandma drunk they're taking shots of tequila and singing songs it's pretty fun and then they see the naked girl next door they put like the gopro camera in the air vent and we see some bush and some big old tits and like i said is she even real is she a mannequin i could not tell and then <laughs> but yeah just like the the back and forth between hector and jesse and just them fucking with each other Hector will draw a dick on Jesse's face, and then Jesse, when Hector's lighting a firework, he'll be like, boom, to scare him. Just all that stuff. It just makes the movie lighthearted. You're having a good time. And therefore, when something scary does happen, it's like, whoa, where did that come from? I was having such a good time. And then that makes the scares more effective, right? We see that there's a weird neighbor downstairs named Anna who has like the cliche like newspaper clippings over the windows like no one can see me doing my weird witch stuff. And apparently this chick knew Jesse's mom 18 years ago and they just coincidentally live near her or did she purposely live near them being keeping her eye out on them. The whole uh, Oscar guy is I guess he was marked at birth too. Is it a coincidence that they all just kind of go to the same school these people that were marked? It seems like the witches are only in different cities in California, I guess, right? I don't know. But uh, there's just some things in here where I'm like, that's a kind of a coincidence, isn't it? But whatever. Then they find Katie and Christie's tapes, and it says, like, uh, Katie and Christie, 88. So I thought that was pretty cool, like, all these tapes that say 88. And for some reason, Annie, Anna, this woman, uh, the creepy neighbor downstairs, she has all their tapes. Why does she have them? Within the grandma or somebody related uh, from the those people in the first few movies when they have it why does Annie have it they never explain that does everybody get their own copy now I'm just asking stupid questions but yeah he draws the cock on his face that was pretty funny and then he has like a bite mark because now he's 18 but it looks like the La Llorona like a mark from La Llorona <laughs> it just reminded me of that and then we see the new, the Carlsbad newspaper and they start playing Simon Says I don't know what group of 18 year olds want to play Simon Says but they start playing it and I like that this is like this movie's version of the Ouija board because that's been done a million times done to death he wakes up the next day Jesse and he finds out he has all these superpowers he can trust fall with the ghost he's just like falling back and she's like floating in the air and Hector gets the brilliant idea to start filming this stuff like everything else he's been filming the whole movie and put it on YouTube and then you got, like, all the troll comments, like, that's this is fake. You guys are fucking fakers. Whatever. Whatever fucking trolls say. They always say stupid shit. But then there's, like, the comments that say, like, what effects program are you using? But, yeah, I just, I love that whole sequence. Like, <laughs> the friend goes to try to trust fall, too, and he just falls right on his ass. Oh, that had to hurt. But, yeah, there's some neat effects in this movie. Like, when the dog is on the ceiling towards the end, like, the dog, he's just like looking up, he's like telepathically or telekinetically, whatever, telekinetically just throwing the dog up at the ceiling and it's just staying up there whimpering, like how they did that, that was funny and cruel. 
And then like, Oscar, he's got like the black eyes, and he's telling Jesse that he needs to kill himself or he'll hurt others. We've heard that before in movies before. Not, uh, American Werewolf in London, you gotta kill yourself. But yeah, and then he like super punches these muggers. These muggers want to like steal his money, I guess, in his backpack, and just super punches them. They go flying across the park. Yeah. But then like later on, he's like hitting this guy in a grocery store that was like flirting with his sister or friend or whatever relation she is to him. He like hits him and he flies back maybe like two feet. I was like, use your super punch. But he doesn't use it. And they pick up girls very quickly. Like, I don't know what they were going out to do, but it wasn't pick up girls. But they see a party, they go there, they pick up these Latina chicks and they're beautiful. And they take them back to the creepy Anne place, Anna's place. Uh, but she's like dead at this point because Oscar killed her. Uh, <laughs> she's just like so horny, this girl he picked up. And she's just like, I want you to fuck this shit out of me. But he ain't got a condom. So he takes like 10 minutes to go and get a condom. Really? You got this beautiful woman who's just wanting you to fuck the shit out of her. And you're going to take 10 minutes to go get a condom upstairs? Any man would be sprinting. He would come back like breathing very heavily because he ran his ass off to go get that condom. And if he was going to go out to get laid, he should have had a condom on him already. Or just lie about it and be like, I got a condom, don't worry. And like turn your back and like pretend open one, like make... Like my, my, become like Michael Winslow in that moment. Just make noises like plastic. And then pretend like you're putting a condom on. Lie about it. And if she questions you while sex, like, I don't think you have one on. Just be like, it's the world's thinnest condom. Trust me, babe. And fuck the shit out of her. But he gets cock-blocked by his own stupidity. And then Oscar, he's there. And he, there's like the secret cellar downstairs that somehow Anna built over the years and nobody heard a thing. Bullshit! How did no one know about that? And it's very big and elaborate, this underground uh, like basement that she built. So yeah, somebody would have heard all that digging and construction. You would need like a shovel, sledgehammer, pickaxe, and jackhammer, whatever. Somebody would have heard something. Then they find Jesse's pick in the cellar, so apparently Anne was just... Was he marked from birth, or is, she, or is he marked now? See, I'm confused. Well, I thought Jesse was marked at birth. She doesn't need to be like taking his picture putting it in the basement and doing some kind of witch thing on it to make him possessed now. I thought it was just like, when you're 18, you're possessed. And we find that out because of Allie. Allie from part two, she makes a return here. I thought that was awesome. And this is supposed to take place like six years after part two. She doesn't really look six years older, but then again, she's like a 25-year-old actress playing a 16-year-old in part two. But she tells them that when you're you're marked at birth, there's these witches, she's been studying this shit for the past six years, and she says when you're 18, that's when this thing in you that was marked since birth comes out and it possesses you, because 666, six, six, you know, 6 plus 6 plus 6 equals 18, I think that's the explanation we get, and I hate when you see 555 in the movie, it's just annoying, I don't hate it, but it's just annoying, when I see it, I'm like, really, just fucking make something up, I cover it do some creative stuff to cover up a number or something give us a real number this 555 crap it's just like it's fake as fuck it's a movie thing and it's annoying and yeah and then there's this one scene one of the only creepy scenes in the movie i mean he's in that basement and you just hear the foot the footsteps like running towards him but you don't see what's running you just kind of like hear it coming closer and closer i like that kind of scare like lights out that one short on youtube Oh, that gave me chills. But then the other scare, not really a scare, but just kind of like a creepy sequence. He has that big old black hair that he's taking out of his eyeballs coming out of the corner. Oh, we see Katie and Chrissy as kids, like the ghost of their former selves for some reason. It's not like they died as kids, but for some reason, their six and five year old like versions of themselves are like ghosts that uh, Jesse's seen in the basement. But again, that's like a little callback to part three. I like that. And, yeah, he gets attacked in the basement. And then they do this egg yolk. Like, it's like, I think it's like a Latino thing, right? Because it's in the Curse of La Llorona, and the Latino priest is like, you know, if I do this little blessing on this egg and then I crack it open on you, it's going to be black yolk. And that's exactly what happens in here. The grandma's doing this, like, you know, ritual thing. She's saying whatnot. I don't know what she was saying. But then, like, 
she grabs the egg and then he grabs it and squishes it and there's like black shit coming out of it so it's like oh he's possessed look it's black and then the whole room like starts like melting or contorting it's like it's being sucked into a different dimension and then it just explodes back to normal and everything in the room is just like flying around and jesse's like levitating i thought that effect was pretty cool that was pretty awesome i don't know how they did that and then the grandma gets thrown down the stairs but i don't think she dies they say she's at the hospital i think and then they take these gangsters and they go to the house in part three. That was awesome. I couldn't tell at first, but when I saw that long like driveway that went to like the, the guest house or garage or whatever where the witches were in part three, that was awesome. We got a bunch of witches in here and the gangsters that they brought have like that submachine gun and shotgun and they're blasting witches away. This becomes like an action movie for a split second. They're just blasting them away. I thought that was awesome. But then they get taken out. Uh... Marisol, she gets killed. She drops through the glass. And then uh, Hector, he goes through this portal. It's like a time portal. And it takes him back six years uh, to the events of part one. And he sees Katie. That was awesome. I was just like, holy shit. They're going back to part one. And I just love how that tied into it. It didn't like change anything from part one. We were like, oh, that's not how it happened. It you never really got to see what was going on downstairs in part one. So I love how smart that was written in there. So it's like, oh, shit. Now when I watch part one, I'll be thinking, like, Hector's down there. So I thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, he turns around. Jesse, he's got the demonic face. And he kills Hector. And then the screen, the camera falls over, like, every ending in this movie so far. I think that's, like, the common theme in all these movies is it ends with the camera falling over and then katie's looking at the camera and she like closes it and then it's over there you go so uh i have a question where's hunter and they didn't need him when he's 18 they were wanting to kill him or do whatever with him when he was five and one and part two so now they gotta wait till he's 18 where's hunter they don't mention him in this movie so i was just wondering where hunter is and yeah is the grandma immortal from part three? There's an old woman in here, and I'm not sure if that's supposed to be the grandma from part three. So is that the grandma from part three? That's my other question. So nobody's going to answer them in the comments below, but just in case you do, those are my questions. So those are my thoughts on Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones. Did you like this one? Is it the best one to you? Is it the worst one? Where would you put it in your ranking? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you like what you've seen here, you can hit this like button and you can become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And until next time, Alpha Vedersi.